Jing herbs are going to be the herbs that are working on particular organ systems, spe specifically the kidneys, as well as the kidneys, it's going, to be to it's going to be working on the liver. And in that instance, you see that you get a particular yin-yang whooshing flow through taking Jing herbs, like eucomia, mm. like romania, goji berry, mm. dendrobium, deer antler, cordyceps. And these are probably the most important Taoist tonic herbs for Westerners because they are the Jing herbs mm. and they are the foundation. And if you've not got that charge within your batteries, how are you going to continue to charge yourself all the way up to, you know, like to be conservative, 70, 80, mm. 90, 100. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't even need to be fantastical, but do that without degenerating. So welcome on the show. Hi, Mason. Hey, Seb. Nice to have you again. Very excited to be back in the sauna with you. Yeah, your old sauna it is yeah, actually. my huh? old sauna. Mm, yep. Now you looked after it well. Well, kind of. <laughs> put a huge dint in the floor from when I fell off it. <laughs> yeah, but, but I know you didn't do it on purpose. And it's still good enough for podcast boost, so thank you for giving that back to us. Yeah, well, I mean, we always work well together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it was the day before I was moving. I was pulling it apart. Everyone, I came off it. I fractured a bone in my hand. And <laughs> yeah, it's two meters fall, isn't it? Yeah. And I was like, roof. yeah, you know what? Then it wouldn't fit into my new house. But I was like, Sebastian, <laughs> <laughs> can we swap this? <laughs> can we swap this? And so I'm really, yeah, you're very resourceful German sauna man. You're welcome. So you're part of our sauna boy club today. And what we... I would love to chat. L last time you were on the show, we talked a lot about health in general, feds of health, and um, yeah, and how to identify what's right for you, and and not being carried away by you know what everyone suggests to do. So um, I would love to talk to you actually about what your bread and butter and yet you know your your main passion is and what Superfest is about, and that's um, that's the whole tonic herb range that that you have um, and that you have explored yourself and found the best herbs and the, the best way of, of, of production of these things and how to get them to people so I would really love to dive into that and make it really practical for people at the same time so that they understand this topic um, yeah well so if you are you up for that yeah I'm so up for it oh, fantastic I, I hope that would be the case hey um so you so you what's your approach for for choosing herbs that that you have have on on the offering for people like you're like what's what's your overall intent uh for, for choosing the right products i mean the the best part for me about owning a tonic herb company that delves in other um, interesting types of herbs that people might have heard about like the medicinal mushrooms or functional mu mushrooms or adaptogens is that from Superfeast, i've got a guiding light in a core philosophy mm. which is that indigenous um, philosophy of um, of the Orient, China, especially being Taoism, mm. and so that as an approach to herbalism grounds me in a dialogue around herbs and uh, an appropriate progression of ensuring that we build back the health of the body and then fortify the health of the body. When you go back into the the days when it was just a complete system, the Taoists were living very much ensconced in nature and they were huh. surrounded by the elements and so the system emerged from being a, a, a low problematic style of herbs which means they're not so focused on the symptoms they've got classical chinese medicine there um it's, you know the 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 deeper um, deeper traditions of um, acupuncture and healing that can go in and deal with states of disease. Mm. The Taoists had um, gotten a foot ahead for themselves. They wanted a lot of, um, they wanted to progress themselves as much as possible. So basically ensure that they just become you know, as virtuous as possible, learn as many lessons as they can throughout their life, continue to be of contribution to the community, mm. um, humbly pass on the lessons that they learnt in life. And so within that scope, there's a dialogue, um, this this closed system dialogue of the particular types of energy that you need to ensure mm. that you are um, building, making sure that they're not being deficient in the body, which would open you up to aggressive and premature 
degeneration. Yeah. And so from that, the, it, it's a closed loop system. There's only, it's, it's quite simple. There's only, you know, ensuring that the, the yin and yang forces of the body, most notably you're up and about during the day and you're down really going into your deep yin state at night with sleep. Mm. And then to ensure that you are transforming between yin and yang with as smooth a um, bridging as possible, you know, they, they'd have particular movement practices, ensuring they were meditating on their emotions and then taking herbs um, and, you know, as, and then doing qigong and, yeah. you know, and, and having these other practices that would ensure that as the yin and yang forces and, and energy and qi was moving through, especially the five major organs, liver, heart, spleen, lung, uh, kidneys, that there's a smooth transition. Just a smooth transition. That's yeah. it. If you if you're there, you've. It's not like life is perfect. Life is imperfectly perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the if you can get that smooth flow, you can develop as a human mm-hmm. and develop as a um, you know bringing your your spirit into communion with this physical body. Now, what they realized, if you could get on the front foot, continuing to allow a smooth flow to go through these organs as the seasons go th- go on, there's a particular. Um, accumulation or um, a focus of the chi in a particular organ we're kind of entering into uh, on the on the precipice of a springtime we're in yeah. an early spring here and so you're going to see more of the the liver being the you know the the focus of where the chi is going to hmm. be accumulating and flowing through in the body and so if they could get in step with nature if they could get in step with the the cycle of the sun and the earth as much as possible, which is what we do. We put mm. more clothes on in winter and we take clothes off in, in summer. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's, but they, they really live their life like that. Whereas we are technologically plugged in. Yeah. Therefore, we divorce ourselves from nature a little bit. But if you are getting into that flow and you're using particular herbs that are um, in that dietary category. So at the same way, they're eating, eating appropriately for their body and eating appropriately for the season. They will also be taking herbs that they saw as over thousands of years of usage. These were just the ones that were gentle enough. They'd say life-giving enough, life-cultivating enough. Didn't have many drawbacks. You could take them consistently long-term uh-huh. without depleting the body eventually. And, and so they became the tonic herbs. And it was just very simply. They just continue to keep you know, the ginsengs, gojis, shizandras reishis, eucomia barks, they'd, they'd still circulate in the diet like a, a food would, but they were gentle enough, but very medicinal in their effect that they'd really help this flow of energy to be maintained. If you can maintain that flow of energy with your lifestyle, which does include the usage of tonic herbs, mm. which we have completely separated ourselves from mm. having a medicinal a herb as a part of our diet even Western herbalism, which kind of threw me off when I was starting to study this Mm. stuff when I was in uni and meant to be studying business, but studying this instead. (laughs) Well, I I just, I could never get behind full-blown clinical herbalism because I just personally, you know, I love my practitioners and I Mm. use them because I get symptoms that Mm. pop up and I'm not qualified to, you know, well, to a particular extent I am, but if I feel like it's a bit out of my depth, I'll go Mm. and see a practitioner, but... I just wasn't inspired by working on problems. I mm-hmm. wanted to cultivate life and see how good it could get. Get on the front foot and the preventative foot and the explorative foot, explorative foot as much as possible. And the Taoist tonic herbalism really had that approach as I couldn't find that in Western herbalism and even especially actually in, in the way that Chinese medicine is taught in a modern sense because it's, it's, it's removed itself and colonized itself from its classical roots, Mm -hmm. which is based in the classics. And so these herbs, if you can get in that flow, take your herbs, your lifestyle is kind of moving and shaking with the elements and the stars and the earth. Then you, in the Taoist tradition, they, they actually give you a terminology for what you're cultivating and what's intangible. You feel something coming back. Yeah. Where you feel, you know, we all feel what happens if we can really, you know, prioritize our sleep. And yeah. create this, this beautiful sleep environment all of a sudden something comes back and we try and explain oh yes you lo- lower in cortisol and, and this mm-hmm. and that and, and and these are these are great things to be able to to go into a reductionist western scientific mindset but 
that doesn't mean anything to me. That's not, it's not, it's not this holistic and integrated terminology that allows me to like, I'm like for the rest of my life, I can't just have good sleep to lower cortisol. It's this, it lacks romance and storytelling and it lacks, um, um, an <laughs> integration with re- what I can perceive in, in reality that allows me to build this culture of health that can eventually be passed down to my children, and my peers, just by them observing that I'm building something in my body when I have a particular lifestyle flow and I'm taking these herbs. And what that is in the Taoist tradition is the treasures. And you build these three treasures. The 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 Jing um the Jing is the primary um foundational treasure there. Mm. There's the secondary treasure there is our chi, our vitality, and the third is our shen. Now a tonic herb is a tonic herb, a superior herb as they would um, as they called them in the the primary uh, materia medica mm. herbal text over 2000 years ago, Shen Nong's um, Ben Sao Jing. These are the superior herbs that you can use to cultivate your Jing Chi Shen. If a herb cannot be integrated long term, small doses over a long period, maybe cycling in for particular seasons, out in particular, but in the diet in with some kind of permanence mm-hmm. or consistency. If if they can help you build your three treasures, then that's a tonic herb and it's a superior herb. And that filled me with purpose. Mm. I liked the idea of students and mothers and fathers and my family and myself getting onto the front foot without needing to go into the mental, heady, scientific space of reductionist of needing to justify an external reason for why I'm going to take a herb. Gotcha. So, so basically, w- what you found for yourself is that the system that had the most substance to create a strong foundation and and set you up for um, set for, set you up for, for living a lifestyle that you want and don't have to you know and, and and can be lenient with your sleep and can be lenient with this and that and and take the the herbs to support. Uh, well, to buffer, I guess you know anything that might be a little bit out of alignment. You found a system that um, that that is easily to apply. You, you don't have to. Do you have a practitioner for tonic for tonic herbs because mm-hmm. they they are almost like food. You can just use them that way. Well, and and that and that can that shits practitioners, the ones that that are, are married to an institution, but it feels the practitioners that are actually about keeping their patients mm. out of the clinic it fills them with joy that people are taking it um in, on their own accord and the tonic herbs yeah. are very forgiving and yeah. so it's you, you as you're taking it in small doses or the medicinal mushrooms like chaga and reishi and they're you know to use the western terminology they're immunologically getting in and activating and turning the lights on for your immune system there's not too much that can go wrong if you're being sensible with your mm. dosage. Elderly are taking it, children are taking it. And if you're tuned in, you know, you know, you instinctively know, just like when you know it's time to stop eating lots of raw salads. <laughs> you know, you just go, all right, I'll stop that herb, I'll stop yeah. the salads. And you, you mentioned about it helping you um, if you are, you know, testing the edges of your body, yeah. and you're not sleeping so much or mm. you're not eating the best thing. I do like the fact that things like, the sauna, the the tonic herbs, they can ensure that you don't fall off the edge mm-hmm. into exhaustion. Mm. You don't fall off the edge into what we call a lifestyle that depletes our jing, which we can we'll talk about the treasures. Yeah, that would be and, great. But if, what they what I like about the system, um, being a system about potentiation and prevention, mm-hmm. is it's also got integrity that will say. And you're going to hit a glass ceiling unless you can match the rest of your lifestyle practices with the level of, you know, of, of magic that these herbs have. Mm. Then you're going to hit a glass ceiling. They'll keep you sane and they'll, they'll keep you from falling off the edge. Say the Jing herbs, which mm. nourish the kidneys, they'll keep you from falling off for quite a while. If you're, you know, smashing coffees and not sleeping and hustling, mm. you take Jing herbs, they'll stop you from getting exhausted for a while and maybe keep you there for a long time and be a real crutch for you, which is sometimes we need that because sometimes we need to hustle in life and yeah. sometimes tragedy happens in life. Yeah. And that's something that I identified early because I was just doing, you know, it's been nearly 10 years doing Super Feast and mm. the amount of stories of someone would get hit financial hardship or lose a, um, lose a partner or, you know, have a child that would become, you know, like, well, you know, like a, a problem child. Mm. 
you know, just, you know, using that term lightly, um, they lose their job, whatever it is. Yeah. If your body's walking on eggshells, that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And mm. so I'm very comfortable with people taking these herbs when they have to be in play, uh, when they, when they, like, they have to be sleep deprived or they have to burn the candle at both ends and they are deprived of like sleep or a good diet. The, the herbs will really crutch you, but the beauty is that they will lure you in and they'll lure your desire in to ensure that your your entire approach to your lifestyle and the way that you're flowing with nature will, if you give it the opportunity, hone in more with that flow. So they become less of a reliance on the mm. herbs to save you from something, although they can do that. And most people are going to use it for that. Let's be realistic in the yeah. Western world. But the the opportunity they they they're spiritual herbs they're they're alive they're they're energetically alive there's a reason for thousands and thousands of thousands of years they've had clinical usage but they've also had um they've had kitchen usage you know they've had the herbalist wandering the countryside informing people did you know this mushroom grows in your area you can be going out and harvesting that and you know and, and bringing that into your world and then once you have a connection to nature through that herb then your desire to connect other elements you know connect your sleep and connect your diet and and all these things with with reality rather yeah. than being swept off in this progressive um you know growth based you know like or perpetual like accumulating um needing to dominate kind of culture that we have which can be great at times and can be overwhelming at times for the physical body the herbs will draw you into that space right so if i understand you right then th th these are herbs that people can use even you know once something has passed and they actually don't necessarily need the herb anymore or ideally one, yeah ideally right but that's that's great like you can have it as in your toolbox back you basically can can take it while you need it but there's no problem of keep taking it so whenever the edge comes on you're actually prepared because you're already on the herbs yeah mm. yeah right so how would people find you like normally it's the story that something is wrong in their lives or something is wrong with their body that's how they hear about tonic herbs because you can use them without prescription they are not in, um, invasive like, like a really strong shiny herb that might really change you know how your body functions and on, on, on. taste is crap <laughs> yeah, oh, is it about the taste, is it? Well, it is, absolutely. <laughs> like, that's like the the, for, the formulas taste relatively good. They need to be able to mix in with like a mum that ha can't get medicinal mushrooms into her kids, you know, because their their immunity is so poor or the allergies are so off the handle because they've got no integrated immune system. It needs mm. to be taste good enough to be able to put it into a spaghetti bolognese yeah. or do a miso soup. And that's what people do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Like what would be a herb that, that is given to a child? The mushroom mix, with the mason's mushrooms, yeah. reishi, chi tonics, chi tonics. Mm. So they, they, you know, kids, um, kids have, you know, generally they've got erratic and developing chi, and so immunologically, you know, they're 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 learning so much as they go along. That's why they get sniffles, and you know, they get the bright red cheeks as they're growing up. They've got, you know, uh, they've got um, okay. their body's learning how to defend itself and learn how to work within this bacterial, viral beautiful microbial world you know so that's like and in order to help them develop chi tonics like you know, like shagas and lion's manes and reishis and you know they're the mushrooms and then the chi um the other herbs you know the the, the roots like astragalus and white mm. attractylodes and porias these are other herbs that can support their chi and the chi tonics support their their surface immunity so in, in, in a western sense but their wee chi their protective chi that kind of like force field of energy that can ensure that you know basically the, the forces can't get into the body and augment you and step you out of your huh? yin yang yeah five element transformation cycle right yeah and i i assume this has been happening for thousands of years that actually kids have also been given these these, these herbs as well hmm. part, yeah right so um i mean they're given chicken nuggets <laughs> <laughs> like people are like like you know and and you got it and I and I'm not just like a yeah no problem ever with herbs these herbs are active you know you 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 step you step lightly whenever you're introducing anything that's really medicinally active you start slow you know mm. with a kid you know like officially we're like you know maybe after they're two you know we kind of start bringing it yeah. in but you know at the same time you know people are giving kids antibiotics and all kinds of things without skipping a beat 
and the um and so i do like to wave the banner for for trust in medicinals that have been given to kids like especially astragalus like it's been used for a long time very famous for ensuring that children stay fortified yeah yeah i just wanted to tease it out of you because i know you have a view there and it's just good to to hear the assurance of why you know and, and that there's a history it's, i think it's important to hear for especially if people haven't got much experience with that or don't have the time to really research as well it's like yeah you know this is very normal and th that's what i like when when you talk about this um you make it sound really normal and, and this is just what you do well i mean i and i, f I find i'm a pretty as eccentric and as, as i am and you mm. know I, I i feel like i'm a pretty grounded normal person mm. and, I'll, and i'll have i'll have very non as much as i go i am kind of like got peter pan syndrome and i want to live in neverland i'm <laughs> i will have a non-fantastical like really grounded conversation with you about how we're going to approach these things because yeah. quite often it's about ensuring that we we have realistic expectations mm. of what including a herb is going to do that we're not just thinking it's going to cure this or you know sometimes it does quite yeah. often it doesn't you yeah. know these oh, aren't okay. these aren't herbs to cure anything we're, we're just looking to bring harmony to the body and hopefully if the body has harmony with the herbs and you're looking at your environment mm. and you know making sure there's you know like environmental toxins aren't mm -hmm. going into like it's in a, you know a child's body you know it's like it's a piece of the puzzle and if you have realistic expectations that's when funnily enough and kind of you know counterintuitively you can see you know the glass ceiling coming off of what you can experience mm. long term in terms of what can happen with these herbs but you just go in grounded small doses just know that you're kind of doing something that humans have been doing for a long time which mm. is taking roots and barks and and mushrooms in order to stay in harmony with the the environment that you know the earth that they came from mm. cool yeah and i would love to dive into a few of those uh in, in a bit and maybe also talk about this is a typical person that would come to us or these are the typical mm. symptoms that people experience oh, yeah that's right you did say that <laughs> that's right <laughs> we had a talk before um, but uh, well, one thing that that would be useful i think is if, if we just have a bit of a fun foundational conversation here about like the three treasures so so you were saying there's jing shi and shin mm. um can you just give us an example of like what would a person look like they have none of that um i'll do a, i'll run through a quick analogy yeah so the treasures are the three foundational energies um which you are very you know you can relate to them in yourself like a thing so so it's it's actually almost like sorry to interrupt you but yeah. you know it's almost like a compass so you look like at the qualities that i may be missing and you said this is probably because i have a deficiency in chi which relates to a herb that i then can look for i need a chi herb here or mm. i need a shen herb here yeah the way it would generally work is that your yin yang five element which is a rough translation so your yin yang wu xing cycle the way that your energy is transforming between yin and yang in your body through your five element um through your five major organs mm. gets out of step and when that's out of step then we see a draining of one of the treasures or a development of one of the treasures mm. you, you, you feel mm -hmm. me on that mm, so yeah. if the three treasures are jing chi and shen an analogy and you relate to your own body um and the, the, the this isn't the, the beauty about it is everyone can be like oh yeah i can relate to that i can relate to that yeah it's simple right it's very oh. it's very simple none, none of this is if anything um, is unobtainable for you in mm. understanding, it's just maybe I haven't been as refined in communicating it, or you're <laughs> looking, you're looking for something that's more complicated than it actually is. Yeah. Um, because the solutions are quite simple, and it's just like you have to make these changes, and it's like no, <laughs> I don't get it. It's too, it's too <laughs> esoteric. I don't understand. It's like, um, but you know, it takes a long time to 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 crack that that rigid box-like thinking yeah. quite often in the West. But so if we look, we start with um, the battery being the starting point of this analogy. Mm -hmm. And so there is that battery, which is uh, really, you know, that Jing energy is is the battery and it lives in the kidneys. Mm -hmm. And you can relate to that battery losing charge mm -hmm. and not being charged when you burn it at both ends yeah naturally your battery is going to lose charge right and you you get tired you get tired you get tired and then what happens in the west is when we fall under that critical mass of charge because remember life is always trying to charge you mm -hmm. back up you're always mm -hmm. being drawn back mm -hmm. towards 
you know what you need to do. Mm. And often there's psychological things and you know baggage we need to and and, and environmental work factors and all that mm-hmm. family factors. But Jing is that charge in the battery. And so if we can ensure that we don't fall into that lifestyle, emotional, psychological loops that just keep on, you know, keep on draining that power in the battery, because eventually that's when you, when you get under a critical mass and you start going into exhaustion, that's especially when you start opening yourself up to physiologically walking on eggshells and your Jing energy is related to, um, Basically, it's the foundation. You know, if you have poor Jing energy, you're trying to build a temple on a swamp, right? Mm-hmm. And so, it, you know, in, in a way, if you think about um, someone like, um, so, so the beginning, let's say like, you know, someone is great, you know, everything is good, they're, they're not burning it on, on both sides of the candle, therefore, you know, they have enough Jing going seven days a week, no problem. Then, you know, they have less sleep and it starts that they need a coffee to you know to keep their energy level up Mm -hmm. and they need a coffee on the weekend to keep their energy level up at one stage on the weekend they just crash and they can't help it and eventually um and and we sometimes see see these cases when they come and 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 look for relaxation and 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 that type of thing they they go into um um chronic exhaustion right you know like chronic fatigue and all of that would you say this is sort of a really extreme case of no jing left yeah and it's not even that extreme it's like so common and you know the warning signs come up early that you're getting oh. tired more often and you don't have a you don't have a strong foundation it's hard to get out of bed mm. um and so the and you you said it you go into extreme exhaustion and then what you start to see um especially at those critical points when it, um you can't handle stress if you don't have a foundational jing if your battery's not you're not charged right you don't have genetic potential mm. you don't have strong knees you don't have strong bones you don't have strong bone marrow you don't have strong brain function because the marrow of um, the the sea of marrow this is what the Taoists will call the brain. That doesn't have foundation. That doesn't have the kidneys regulating it properly, and so you start seeing a slow, slow, slow deterioration. Bone health, um, and then digestive health because you know immunological health because you don't have the jing, you don't have the foundations. You're going to start going downhill. What you see is rapid aging. You start seeing. Uh, uh, a, a very fast going gray you start all of a sudden you see an extremely very you know very sudden um deterioration of the physical body uh. because you've been flogging yourself and so you don't have the battery to actually keep regenerating you don't have the power to keep regenerating uh, yeah 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 okay that makes sense so and then these people would come to you and would say what can I do? Yeah. And so, I mean, from a herbal sense, obviously you guys get that we're talking a lot about lifestyle here. And yeah. so we can bypass and just make sure that we and just go, the herbs that we're going to be using in those instances, very simple, Jing herbs. And Jing herbs are going to be the herbs that are working on particular organ systems, spe- specifically the kidneys, as well as the kidneys, it's going, to be to, it's going to be working on the liver. And in that instance, you see that you get a particular yin yang whooshing flow through taking jing herbs like eucomia mm. like romania goji berry mm. dendrobium deer antler cordyceps and these are probably the most important Taoist tonic herbs for westerners because they are the jing herbs mm. and they are the foundation and if you've not got that charge within your batteries how are you going to continue to charge yourself all the way up to, you know, like to be conservative, 70 and 80, hmm. 90, 100. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't even need to be fantastical, but do that without degenerating. Yeah. Because the Jing energy within you is, you know, as we said, it's it's regulating your 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 bone health, your your hips, your your skeletal system. And so these are the things that deteriorate. And so if you, if, and, and we don't want to get moral, we don't want to get people like, oh my God, I was exhausted. Yeah. And, and, and then I just went and did all these coffees. It's like the beautiful thing is you're getting on the front foot. You start to incorporate Jing herbs. And over the next few years, you watch what happens when you start feeling that you, and you start powering up <laughs> yeah. and you start realizing, and you've got that, that level of sovereignty that you can recognize, wow, I really burnt myself this week, huh. this next year, especially in springtime yeah. is when we start to, we've got all this experience and who we are in the winter, we've gone deep into ourselves and we've developed this wisdom, right? Who am I? You know, you're taking stock of really who you are, what I learned the year before. And in spring, you get to really go, 
I really burnt it at both ends. And this year I'm going to start taking some time off. I'm going to prioritize my practice. Mm. I do, you know, and you, and you really get, you know, it's, it's an ongoing year by year. You're in flow with this perpetual flow with nature. So don't get moral mm, about yeah. it and don't get down on yourself. But the, those Jing herbs and the Jing formula has just been a phenomena because yeah. it's very well balanced and those particular herbs and the way that that form that formula has been developed it has a particular um proclivity to ensuring that we recharge that battery Mm. and then what happens when we recharge the battery and we have that battery Mm. all right we've got to plug it into something and so once you it's kind of like once you go and you plug that battery into you as a human system yeah all of a sudden you can spark to life so that's the second tre- that's treasure the then. second treasure that's the chi huh. and so if you can see without that jing you're never going to get to that that point where you can actually animate this body mm. and move this body and have these emotions moving and thoughts moving and move the blood and have all these forces like um transforming with you taking the water chi transforming that and heating it up into a vapor so that mm. can go up and, um, and and nourish your tissue and nourish other elements you know more wood based elements within your within your body which we're getting a little towards the Taoist yeah. then but basically it's it's animation it's movement it's your vitality and it's your skip in your step you become lackluster and pale when you don't have chi you become fatigued very quickly you've you got you know you know a lot of these people they've got a lot of jing like um, like Keith Richards. Keith like, Richards isn't a singer, it's 1970s. Um, guitarist. Oh, like Rolling this, Stones. Yeah, Jeepers he's Christ. got a lot of jing. He can take all the drugs and yeah. drink and just back up and yeah. back up and back up. He's blessed with jing. And then you know a lot of people, you know, like this. And and for them, that's not you know, of course, you know, he he looks like he could have used some jing herbs. Don't get me wrong, but you know, for a lot of people, <laughs> it's the fact that they. You know, I can get up and go. It's not that I have exhaustion. It's not like I, I can't, you know, it's not, it's not like I can't get up out of the bed in the morning and they're hustlers and they can move, but they fatigue. They lose the their mental stamina. So if I compare that to people who are on the couch on the weekend because they can't move because they don't have enough jing. Depends on whether they're, ex- yeah, okay, go so, for it. Yeah, right. So, so I, I get your concept so there's a battery that is charged now so we're talking about people now that have enough jing mm-hmm. but they don't they they might or they might not have the right chi so moving this around so, so i'm just trying to picture a person that would be like that because to me it, it is a bit like the same like if they don't move then they don't have energy but we, we're talking about people that don't move and they have energy in a sense quite often the chi is where people will plateau If you can't, if you know that, say, like if you're athletic and you're able to get up and you go to the gym and you train, but you actually don't have the capacity because chi rises up against gravity. You can't elevate yourself up into your next level of performance. You're not actually developing. And so you're plateauing at a particular physical level. And what happens is you've got the jing and you've got the power, Mm. which means you've got the you've got the genetics, you've got the bone strength. Um, you've got the knee strength and you've got all these kinds of things. But what, where chi actually comes from, especially your, our daily chi. So the chi herbs, mushrooms, astragalus, white attractor lodes, poria, turkey tail, gynostemma, um, where these herbs um, uh, are really taking effect is in our digestive system, especially that, that spleen organ and our lung system Mm -hmm. right so that spleen organ uh, that lung organ system and so it's our digestion and our pulmonary capacity to actually extract energy from the breath that we're taking in and the food that we're taking in what happens when you get really when you when you've got a lifestyle that has the basics down pack and you've got some jing herbs in your Mm -hmm. diet you've got the foundation normally you need to graduate to the chi but quite often the change is so subtle but so transformational when you start actually getting really good at digesting your food yeah. and you've got a combination of diet that you can actually digest and you have a breath practice and you start taking chew tonics and your lungs actually start getting to the point where they can really start pulling and cultivating mm. the charge off that air that you're breathing what we do is we take that chi and we send that down into the vital organs where that electromagnetic charge gets stored within the organs and so all of a sudden you start it's less palpable because jing is like 
you're exhausted, you're not exhausted. Mm -hmm. And so people feel it. But this is the difference being your pretty good self to being your absolute (laughs) electrified alive self where you have stamina, you're not crashing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You go and you actually are cultivating electromagnetic charge within your organ systems. And meanwhile, that chi energy is getting circulated through the outside of the body as well. That becomes your protective energy, what we were talking about with the kids earlier, that protective chi. Now, don't get me wrong, like, chi is a harder one for people to wrap their heads around. Yeah, you can see my eyes. Yeah, because it's a bridge. Yeah. Because chi is transitional. We'll talk about Shen and everyone will be like, oh yeah, Shen, you know, (laughs) I want my mind to be calm. I don't want to be as like mentally stressed. I don't want to be as anxious. I don't want my emotions to be as erratic. But we'll, we'll, we'll go here a little bit now, a little bit more conceptual. You know, if in Taoism, if where our Jing is the earth and our third treasure, our Shen is the spirit. Yeah. So the earth is the yin Mm. and the spirit is the yang. Mm. Then the chi is the bridge. Okay. Between those. So this is the thing. Chi is the the kind of the middle ground. And quite often where most people will sit when they want to go into automatic, you know, um, they want to go into the daily kind of grind of life and ensure that they stay as vital as possible and alive as possible. Like think you can move your body. You stay light. Mm. You can take that skeletal system and you can really move it around. Mm-hmm. Right? You are pulsating life. Therefore, the blood can follow your chi and get into the tissue. It's a chop wood carry water treasure. You constantly need to be journeying down to the river and getting that best water and bringing it back up every single day. You Uh constantly need to be chopping wood and you in in order for you to have wood to heat your house. So that is it's a it's not as rewarding. You know, it's because it's so you you just need to do it every day. Every single day you're eating food and mm. every single day you're breathing mm. in order to cultivate chi. And so what it does is it sneaks up on you. And if you can have that good jing saving life, jing herbs, but then you get onto the chi herbs when you're no longer exhausted, the mushrooms, like the mason's mushrooms mm. are basically a chi tonic. And we've got a chi formula as well. If you get onto those, all of a sudden you get this slow build of charge coming in through your organs. Is that almost... When, when I compare it with with just having the power, you know, talking about Jing, and then the Shi, is that almost like having having the being keen on life or being like just able to to do certain things? Like I play this really good tennis game now because I wanted to, rather than it's, it's almost like to to me like not thinking about the body as much as as the mind is like it, it's a mot- motivational force as well, probably, huh? So that when when you don't have it. You just don't feel like it and you just can't make yourself really doing that. It doesn't it doesn't pick you up. Whereas if mm-hmm. you if you have a lot of chi, it picks you up, you use your energy and it and it just gets you places and you just do what your will is interested in doing. Mm. That's it. So if you see is Jing as the it's laid out potential, it's like a blueprint. Huh. The chi is the intelligent force of the universe. And it is the intelligent energy. It's an electromagnetic current, but not the way that we relate to it because it's got it's got an intelligence mm. and a formation to it, right? So if your chi, if you're eating incorrectly, if you're eating incorrectly for your for your spleen and you're dampening your spleen and weakening your spleen, mm. if you if you if you're doing shallow breathing, you you're gonna keep on getting by because you're gonna keep on sucking away at your jing, mm. right? And then if you've got, if you've got, you know, you might be kind of a strong person, right? But all of a sudden you hit 70, you haven't been living correctly and cultivating your chi as you go along because you haven't been doing that chop wood, carry water um, lifestyle. You're going to get to a point where your jing runs out and bang, all of a sudden you get a degenerative disease and you get sick really quick. And that's what we see all the time. The thing with chi is, yes, you want, you've got enough energy to go and play a tennis game. Hmm. And it animates you and it brings you alive and it brings in motivational energy. But because you've got the intelligence and you're accumulating the intelligent charge within your body, you can continue to develop. And so your spark and your luster for life can be maintained intrinsically because you're not leaking your chi. Therefore, your body becomes just basically more stupid. As you go along, you don't have that intelligent force that can, you know, continue to adapt to life's forces and move in a, you know, and, and move in a way where it fills you with inspiration. And this is very conceptual because it is. 
She, she's <laughs> conceptual, and there's no, and and what you're going to see if, in someone who is um, deficient in chi is they're going to fatigue. They're going to have a healthy body, but they're going to fatigue. They're going to fatigue on their um, on their upskilling mm. in life. They're going to fatigue in their career, right? They're going to keep on hitting plateaus, and they're not going to have the energy to go right. This is where my um, this is where, you know, for instance, for me, like this is where the the online retail space is at right now. Oh my God, it's changing again or social media is changing again. I just don't have the energy to go and like learn what's going on. I can't keep up. That's a deficiency of chi. Hmm. I've fatigued. I think so about so many people. Well, you know how you, you know, the people that you went, went to school with, you, you know them for a long time and you sort of observe them, whether they're close friends or, you know, just every now and then you touch base on them. You see them and mm, what I found is like people just drop off and not, I mean, not in terms of friendship, but they just drop off of life and just like they stay stagnant. Like something happened and uh, I always explained it to me like say, to myself is like they had a really difficult partner and therefore they just signed signed out and you know just said like okay you know i will live the rest of my life but i'm done with being interested in you know not being the cool cat anymore not being that ideas person anymore you can't do anything with them anymore they would just want to be in front of the tv and so on so these types of people that just somehow stop they just stop they're just they're not really there and, and they're not the characters that you used to know right mm. so well they couldn't transform yeah and Right, and and to me it was always external causes like external people or a boring job or just somehow, somehow not not well anymore. But not with this system. Basically, you look at these people and you say, all it takes, you know, give and take, a good way to start your life again is actually moving your chi because you 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 got enough jing going there. You know, you're in your mm -hmm. what, whatever twenties, thirties, forties, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you only dropped off because you didn't watch your chi. Mm. You weren't regularly working on your emotions. So your emotions became stagnant and therefore your chi becomes okay, stagnant. Okay, so those are the people I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. So that's a that's mm. a key that's a key factor. You're okay. not going and dealing with your shit and you know, mm -hmm. and therefore transforming. Yeah. You you're not regularly coming back to a movement practice, mm -hmm. therefore you're not moving your chi. You're not eating appropriately. Therefore, you're not able to digest, build the blood. Therefore, you know, if the chi doesn't have blood to push, then your chi is going to become deficient. Mm. So more likely that, the, you know, so more appropriately, the blood doesn't have um, chi, chi to follow. Chi doesn't have the blood to follow it. If you don't have, you know, if you're not, if you're not breathing fresh air, if you're inside all the time and you're breathing dead air, then just very, you know, logically, you're not going to be able to obtain that charge within your body. Mm -hmm. And then that's if you can start to come back to that consistent consistency, consistently going and seeing like, you know, someone to talk, you know, talk through your emotions and, you know, like a Jungian style, like, you know, psychology where you're developing yourself or whatever, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But consistently, not just looking for that big bang. It's everyone in the West wants the Jing because it takes them from being exhausted to not being exhausted. And they're like, oh, what's next? What's the next thing that's going to work like Jing? It's like, now you work your ass off. Mm. Now you get consistent. Mm. And that's the thing. It's not just about going and like, you know, blowing yourself out of your skull in like plant medicine or, you know, like super deep, immersive, meditative, 10 day silent retreats or anything like, although they're great. It's about your consistent meditative practice mm -hmm. and your consistency in terms of like ensuring coming back to your true self and your own practice. That's where the chi develops. And if you can do that, you know, you're talking about and, and some people just don't want to. And that's fine as well. That's mm. the best thing about this system is it's non-judgmental. I don't care. There's, there's places where I kind of like <laughs> have gone now. I'm just going to cruise now. But, you know, I take my chi herbs and I come back to my practice and I, you know, I sunbathe. That's another way we can develop chi. And, you know, I drink good water. So I'm like, I'm holding on. Mm. I'm still holding on. I'm not falling back. I'm not falling. I'm still, I'm still moving my chi and I'm still developing and I'm, I'm allowing my stay into a, stay in a state of subtle transformation, continuing to work on my emotions every single day, right? Not in a hardcore way, just, you know, being open to talking about my beautiful, crazy dysfunction with my partner and with my colleagues yeah. and that kind of stuff. If you don't, if, if, sti, if chi is movement, and it stagnates. If you stagnate in life, 
then you're going to continue. You will dig yourself a hole and then you start drawing on your jing and then you start moving yourself into a place where you can, you can degenerate. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. No. But it's just in this system, that's how we view it. Uh-huh. And so those are the chi herbs. That's like my my why I love mushrooms so much because not only just we were getting very conceptual but that is linked with your your up and go and your vitality and your you know your your hormones being able to move and um you know Mm. your your body being able to stay within its um you know within a beautiful rhythm through the endocrine system a rhythm through the immune system and keep moving and you know keep adapting to the environment that's chi energy as i'd see it and and you, you can relate to it very physiologically and of course you want that adaptability in your system. And that's why I like the chi tonics a lot. I like the medicinal mushrooms a lot. Mm. If I get as many, m- m- more people for, are on Mason's mushrooms than anything else <laughs> in, in my range. And it, yeah. and, and it fills me with a lot of joy. Yeah. Because the mushrooms have got their own trip going on in what they're doing for making sure that people's immune systems have been fortified and unifying the body. But I know at the same time, you know, it's work. they're working on every organ system, but they're really helping that chi to move and cultivate and so it helps bolster people and you know bring a little bit of a wind beneath their wings so that they can can just continue to hold on in this crazy world of things again like really against them so that's um that's the chi oh hey um yeah let's let's go to the third treasure in in just a moment just just one i'm just intrigued if i take her chi herbs does that mean that it might actually trigger other chi blockages to to loosen a little bit like like what you know like do i feel like let's take let's say i take medicinal mushrooms that that move my chi does that mean that i'm more inclined to actually breathe deeper deep with my emotions or um or want to do more exercise um it's it's a potential some people will will feel that Mm. quite instantly some people will feel an immense movement of chi some people will feel that an emotion that's been stuck for years Mm. will move sometimes instantly and they will be able to continue to go and follow that path of development and for some people it's just that you know it's they're feeling a little bit better um it depends on the dose as well some people start on like a quarter teaspoon and stay there and it's like look you might need to get up to a full teaspoon in order to actually feel something kick on um there's always something good going on now but some people might feel that they've got the opportunity to um deal with something and then they just they just don't and that's fine as mm. well. At least the opportunity presented itself. Um, and the other thing that can come up is it moves chi and reveals that maybe that's why it's helped people to go slow. It reveals another symptom that's lying under the surface, which you may not have known about mm. in, in as, um, as, as in a quick amount of time as if you, and if you weren't taking these herbs. Luckily, they're gentle herbs, but it brought something up and you don't know what it is. Great. Now you can take that and go and work yeah. with a classical, classically trained acupuncturist and actually bring it to the surface. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of opportunities. I know I'm talking quite fantastically here and I said that I could also talk non-fantastically, but when you've been doing this for over 10 years in terms of taking the herbs and getting yeah. people onto the herbs, I mean, it's it's undeniable. It's mm. undeniable, the opportunity there. And people do it without the herbs as well, but lots of people are choosing to include the herbs into fortify those mm, energies mm. and that that journey that they're taking and it's palpable the 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 assistance that they are giving you know, giving you as long as your expectations are right you reflect it's the same sometimes i reflect on how like i've been having saunas infrared saunas since i was 16 and mm. you know life's still heavy sometimes it's not perfect and mm. you know my body's not you know in like su- like perfect as well you know toddler young business and you know i'm, I'm going hard at times but you know, and I'm like, oh, I can, I can, you know, tighten up here and tighten up there, and I have the vision for where I want to go in the next mm. ten years. But I reflect on a on the sauna sometimes, and I think, far out, you know, it's been since I was 16 years old that I've been, you know, that I've been so eight, 18 years I've been doing infrared saunas, <laughs> and I'm like, I can, I can palpably feel just how much of a massive, massive impact. Mm. that's had on my life Mm. and all of a sudden i have this this gratitude come out towards my practice and i can see that it's been a slow build and that it's not that i see the result just after i had a sauna all the time but it's a part how that slots in to my continuous flow of my Mm. life over that long and that's the way that the 
the herbs work. You look back and go, how have they yeah. slotted into those last weeks and months? And oh, wow, I can see they've just a little edge there, little wind under the wings there. And ah, oh, that really worked in that season. And that one did not so much. I can take that mm-hmm. out. And, and, then, and then you go on. And so that's, um, yeah, that's the, that's the nature of them. And you, then you move on to the Shen. Um, the Shen the third, third treasure, treasure mm. which is what it's all about from the Taoist perspective which is if you get the Jing the battery and you plug it in so you can animate yourself and come to life and interact with this world and move through this world and mobilize all this stuff that's in you know inside so it's like the spark in the machine mm. right as you is the chi then the enjoyment that you're deriving and the wisdom that you're deriving through that movement and that aliveness that's your Shen, uh-huh. right? And so it's this, it's your ability to observe, have, an, have that experience because it's that higher consciousness. It's that mm. soul energy. It's, um, it's our spirit, which lives, you know, lives in the heart. So when the heart, the heart organ system is flowing, the heart fire, mm. and it's been able to be adjusted. So the fire can come down at particular times. It can come up at particular times and change during the seasons and not become uh, such an erratic fire. Then your spirit can live there within your heart with ease. And then the idea is your more virtuous self can come through. So the heart is that place where we see our capacity. Our Shen is as we build our Shen. And it can go and slip back mm. as well. But as we go along, we hope to just lay, make sure, oh, let's, let's cultivate a little permanent <laughs> <laughs> aspect of our, of our, of our Shen as we, as we go along. But that's our capacity to um, you know, experience the many nuances of love and compassion and gratitude and forgiveness and mm. um and you know to to an extent that's you know a, like a, a a striving to know ourselves and a wisdom that's the shen energy so if you're plugged in with your jing that's the foundation you got charged there to animate and move then you're open to actually do, having experience life experiences and learning from them and enjoying yourself mm. right and so that's the nature of the shen energy and taking shen herbs um oh, i was meant to be i'm developing a little shen Shen oh, blend, kind of a rich figure, yeah, like a dunk, <laughs> dunk a shen. Um, I was meant, I meant to bring you some, but um, like reishi mushroom, um, polygala, um, abesia flower, um, shadavari asparagus root. You know these um, sh- uh, shen poria. You know these these um, pearl as well. These these are the shen oh. tonics that work on um, many organs, but especially the heart in order to just steady the heart. When the heart's steadied, we can steady the mind and make sure the mind isn't chattering. And of course, it isn't just like, take Rishi and your mind will stop. But <laughs> that would be good. It can definitely help yeah. um, long term. Um, calm the mind mm. so that you can be less, ideally, you can be you have more presence, less erratic in your emotions so that you can observe yourself and learn and develop wisdom. And remember, this is in, you know, we're talking about over decades that they would Mm. have practices and take herbs to develop their Shen so they can become the greatest expression of themselves. And so it's very important to think over decades with these herbs, because when you hear this beautiful philosophy that's new for us, we can become dejected when we we're still experiencing hurdles in who we are after five years. And it's like, relax, mate. (laughs) <laughs> you are going to have lots of hurdles, of course, it's stating yeah. the obvious. Everyone knows that. But um, just so you remember, like, you know, it's like the ensuring that you are you're showing up for yourself in your meditative practice mm-hmm. you know, and and taking these these Shen herbs, you know, along alongside it as you as you move along at particular times so that that more that, that wise aspect of yourself that has an, a, a capacity to become a wise elder. That's someone that can, doesn't have to take life too seriously, that isn't attached to external um, external identities, has a real strong knowing of themselves and has a really, you know, potentially a good laugh and a capacity to yeah, really enjoy of. themselves. <laughs> and that's someone you see them, you know, you can see the someone who's lacking Shen is they've got no sparkle in the eye. Right. They right. might be strong, they might be energetic, but, but there's that personality missing that... Yeah, and personality choice. is a key word there uh-huh. as well because that true personality is as well related to that Shen energy, uh-huh. right? And so you can find, wow, an authentic personality coming through is wow, that person's developed Shen. They've got a swagger there. Oh, they just know themselves. They might be doing something which yeah. is seemingly non-spiritual in their career or mm. what well, you know, but they've just they've got this luster 
for life and they just enjoy it. And it's like, wow, that person, you know, whether they're just born with strong Shen or they've worked on it, they've developed it, you mm. know, that's, that's the, and that's the three treasures. Thanks for that. So just come up with an, if I come up with an example there, would, would I, uh, dear to propose, for example, well, you know, one of our girls is just under two, the other one is six. Both of them seem to be, they easily laugh about things. It's, it's just, there's that, there's certainly a spark for life. Like kids, yeah? Would mm -hmm. we say like a, a healthy kid would have those all, even though they were saying, look, you know, you want to move the she along, maybe, you know, with the immune system. But overall, to me, they are just, they're just ready to love. They're just ready to charge. They they just want to engage. They they're never tired of of playing another. Let's pretend this game and and instantly are in that role. All of that, to me, is a, is a very happy play and, and really yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they've got a lot of jing. That's uh, what they're not deficient in. They've got a lot, <laughs> a lot of crest cells. They're like fresh over their embryonic unfolding, and that's jing intelligence, genetic intelligence, rolling out with a spark of, of, of you know, the spark in the machine, which is the chi, allowing that mm -hmm. that to happen. And so they come out just dripping in jing, so much energy, mm. and they've got this erratic chi. You know, they're kind of like kids, like <laughs> catch this, catch that. You know, mm. get like you know, and um, and so their chi's learning, but then so their shen can be erratic as well you know like mm. super happy super sad you know they can just swing right. like that because yeah. um you know and that's and that's that's their that's their gift and that's you know and and they're they're learning but that's their shen developing but it is un um they're they're not scarred you know so the from you know people might be scarred from experiences and stories yeah. they made up about yeah. experiences and so they develop a stagnant um, view of how they're going to be from now on and so therefore they've got a particular emotion that they're not dealing with they're just putting an identity on top of that you know they're just you know they'll just be you yeah. know they'll just stay bitter you know and so therefore they're not dealing with that you're going to have a stagnation and then you're not going to have a flow you're ultimately not going to house um, you know as you'll still have your beautiful higher self able to come through there's always just that opportunity if you go right into the you know to the deep sets of overly identifying you know with yourself as being a particular emotional way then mm -hmm. you know you, you might just lose a little bit of an opportunity for your shen to really you know develop and learn that little extra about yourself mm, that's awesome who would be a good representative of of a healthy a healthy three treasures really like do you have anyone like whether a fictive character or a real co character in, in in mind there um I, that's, I think it's probably best for people just to look in their Look in their own lives, especially for someone that gets over that 65-year-old um, bracket where their body's strong, they're walking, they've got nice strong knees, they've got exercise that's appropriate for their body, therefore they're giving themselves the best opportunity, you know, to... Mm. Um, to, to live a long time and they, they know their lifestyle and they know their edges, right? But they're still adventurous because they've got that chi in themselves, so they've they're, they're vital, they don't get tired, they don't get fatigued, they're just able just to go, go, go because they're imbued with the, the, the that, that passion and chi follows passion. Yeah. And then from there, they, they aren't trying to be wise. They're just able to drop these pennies of, um, you know, of wisdom when it's, you know, seemingly an appropriate time to do so, so you know, and, and they're funny. They don't have an agenda in life. They're able to flow through, just flow through life and have a good sense of, have a good sense of humor. I mean, mm. like Wolfgang, we know is like, mm. you know, a good example of someone with strong, really strong Shen. <laughs> and in yeah. terms of, no, I, I don't know. Like I haven't thought about someone with a good example of all of them, but it, it's really that, that poster child, which it's good not to have too much aspiration when it comes to these things, especially based in someone else, I find, because it'll distract you really quick. I was thinking about go Goofy or someone like that. But yeah, no, I get it. I, I see what you're saying because it, it probably Shen expresses itself in so many different ways. Like yeah. people can be really joyous but never laugh out loud, you know. That, yeah, that it's, a, it's a very revealing process, which mm. is what every culture that's based in nature has a, you know, the Taoists just documented it really yeah. well. They've yeah. just got a capacity to, you know, lead you back to just, just like be authentic, be yourself, you know, mm. where do you fit in with the troop? You know, where do you fit in in nature? What do you enjoy, you know, versus like what's your responsibility and taking mm. responsibility for the choices you made? And it's tough. 
it's a it's a tough amazing sometimes shitty path but it's just like you know <laughs> it's, a, it's and it's not even a virtuous path yeah it's just i really you know it's one where you know it's nice the thought of being like giving yourself the best opportunity and i don't like idealism i don't have a goal for where what everyone looks like or where they're at when they're 60 70 or 80 because it's going to be different and sometimes there's factors we can't we can't control we just give it our best you know a good whack um but no no agenda you know you kind of you walk on the path a little bit which is your own path. That's why i like Taoism because there's no you know agenda there there's mm. no deity based agenda or anything like that you don't have to believe anything just mm. like your you and the way you relate to what's around you and what you can perceive in your body um you just give yourself the best opportunity to become, you know, flowing as much as possible. Yeah. And that I like stacking the odds in that way. Mm. You know, just like, you know, everyone just try and think about their 65 year old, 70 year old self and just be like, yeah, what, what would flow? Yeah. What, what would, what would, it, no, there's no morality, no right or wrong. What would I need to do now just to make sure that, you know, that's in grasp and I think I can do, and, you know, may even be enjoyable, a little bit challenging. That would really kind of like set me set me up when I'm like you know that when I'm that far down track. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. Love it. Thank you for that. We approach the hour and um, don't want to take much more of your time, but I would love to touch just like on a couple of things. I I would love to to ask you just. Um, I, I really want the listeners to understand like why why I believe that your 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 tonic herbs are just so superior. To much that is out there and it's similar like you know in our industry we're selling infrared saunas and i know that you know most saunas that are out there are not healthy for people and um uh, it's a real shame and it's all, it comes down to really education and understanding a little bit about it and and you can distinguish quite quickly what's mm. good and what's you know what's actually yeah more hurting you than helping you that's one thing i just want to ask you and the, the other one would be just if you can just talk a little bit about sort of the top herbs that you or just just three herbs that, that you can pick and just you know point out a little bit of what they're about just so that people get a little bit of an understanding of how one talks about them and what they are for and what people are using them for individual herbs oh well you know or mixtures or either way yeah formulas yeah as well. yeah we've touched we've touched on a couple um and i think they're probably the ones we've touched on two and mm. then i'll bring in another like one um i mean the jing herbs um which I, I said, well, they're containing herbs like eucomia bark, the Jing formula, eucomia bark, goji, mm. um, romania, cordyceps. When people are entering into the world of tonic herbalism mm. and they're exhausted and they just want to feel what maybe they've forgotten what it's like to have that Jing back in their kidneys mm. and have their adrenals be nourished and not be out of sync with the rest of the body. That's the Jing formula. Mm. It's, the, it's a beautiful entry point. And especially if you're mama four and you're going hard and you're like you know you can use that you can really use that especially if you don't have like lots of community support if you're an athlete whatever it is get on the jing herbs and just see how good you can get it back to being Mm -hmm. and then once you feel you'll you'll generally find after like two or three months some people permanently but after two or three months you might go wow you know i feel i'm feeling pretty good i actually don't feel like jing anymore i can move into you know move into something else Mm -hmm. um the other the other formula that people normally take in when they're first starting in conjunction with jing is the mason's mushrooms Mm -hmm. and that's just because the mushrooms are so magical they're so unifying you know there's there's herbs in well i call mushrooms herbs so there's mushrooms um in mason's mushrooms like lion's mane that are neurologically active there's the reishi mushroom which is known as the mushroom of immortality um spiritual potency which is, you know, getting in immunologically, you know, to the marrow and nourishing our capacity to throw out really uh, high levels um, and, you know, making sure that we're managing our capacity to to hold high levels of white blood cells within the body. You know, wow. m- most of the mushrooms, but especially reishi, really hepatoprotective, liver, pro- they're liver protectors, they're antiviral. Um, they're, you know, it's, it's a lung tonic, you know, it's, it's used for for asthma and, and, and lung um, mm. lung weaknesses and sensitivities. Um, shaga mushrooms in there. You know, it's got it's one of the most adaptogenic substances alive. Mm. These these herbs are pretty much all adaptogens, which people might have heard of, but yeah. you know, I, I, um, which is nice to throw in there if you don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're taking your adaptogens. Shaga is probably it's an like it's for for youth preserving from a mushroom perspective, shaga is probably as good as it gets, you know 
huge amounts of superoxide dismutase, huge levels of um, general and other, uh, other antioxidants, skin protective, and just immunologically one of the most potent that you can get. It's got cordyceps in there, which is like the cordyceps is in the Jing and the Masons. And so if you're an athlete, you know, you're frothing on that. I mean, just for what that can do for your blood oxygen optimization and your recovery. So normally people will get on the Mason's mushrooms and the Jing and it'll be like, you know, Jing, if you're tired and want to build back that charge, Mason's mushrooms, if you want that extra vitality and immunity. But the magic is there's all this stuff going on in the background. And Mason's mushrooms probably the best for the whole family. As well, as I said, you put it in a hot chocolate, Put it in a soup, miso, spag bowl. Oh, in a soup. Smoothie. Yeah, well, it's it's like a it's like a mushroom broth. Open, open this one and just like, you've had it before, but yeah. like have a... Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have like, it at have, home, like, but I've never yeah, thought about but it. Just have a smell like now with yeah, like soup right. in mind. It's yeah. you know, like, it it works super well. Um, well, it's my favorite food. That's why I asked. I was like, oh, fantastic. And they're not, they're not heat sensitive as well, which makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Um, in so the, that's true for all of your herbs? Yeah, yeah, not oh, heat cool. sensitive. Um, I mean, and we, you know, we've we, like these are the herbs I take, and you know, you know, I just I I do what I want at Super Feast. I'm the owner. I'm the I'm the sole owner. I source. I had a very particular sourcing strategy, which was like get them as get exactly the herbs that I wanted to take. Mm. So that's like, um, you know, ain't no mountain high enough or valley low enough that I won't mm. go to get these herbs. And in, independent farmers, I don't want big businesses. I don't want a big conglomerates who are cashing in on the whole. Um, organic certification thing because as far as when it comes to like sourcing real good DDAO which is like sourcing from the spiritual homeland these Chinese tonic herbs from China it's you, if you go if I go down the organic route I'm going to have to lower the quality so you know like to right. such a high level hold on so DDAO when you use that in a, in a sense that's like where it traditionally is grown in the traditional way in the traditional um, with the traditional weather aspects and so on where it, where it it's just the strongest expression of that herb, right? Yeah, that's it. In the original text over 2000 years ago that came out, there was a character next to the name of the herb that said, that's the province you need to be getting it from. But then people will say, oh, we'll just grow it in that province and we'll be DDAO, which is what's happening now. You know, I, talk, I call uh-huh. like the two minute noodle businesses coming on board, trying to cash in now that the mushrooms are all kind of like hot and, you know, no. trendy. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, which is cool. It's actually cool. I'm not yeah. like, I, I do enjoy lots of people coming in because it means more people are getting onto mushrooms, which is magic, but they'll just set up a big warehouse down near a city in the province and call it DDAO by ticking off a couple of boxes. But you mentioned the other element, mm. which has got to be particular weather patterns, mm. particular altitude for me, only sp- like a spring water, only a mountain spring water or maybe a well water if that's not possible. So there's no municipal supply of water in there. There's not one external synthetic fertilizer coming in. There's definitely no pesticides. And for me, it's an independently owned farm, right? And so from 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 a perspective of who we're interacting with in, um, in China, they're growing it in a traditional sense and they're localizing industry, right? So you can't grow to a particular... There's a, there's a glass ceiling on growing DDAO herbs, right? Growing them from their, their mm. spiritual homeland, basically growing and farming a wild herb as close to a wild herb as you can. Because once you scale to a particular point, boom, quality goes down and we know. Mm. It's, just, it's, just, it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. DDAO, no, no, there's the highest quality herbs. That's it. Oh, you're growing Hishawu over in that province. But down on, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not like you're down at like zero altitude. Why? Mm. Oh, but don't worry. It's D Dow. It's like, no, I can tell, you know, that's, but that's not, that's, that's something that's been around for since the silk roads opened up mm-hmm. and people started like moving herbs around and trying to make them more like drugs, right? Trying to get large amounts of production, separating it from nature, making mm-hmm. it void from nature, mm-hmm. using it to treat symptoms. That's when herbs started getting used as drugs and people would start going away from DDAO because yeah. originally it was only DDAO. That's the place, only place you could grow them. Well, so that's like something I'm pretty passionate about. And that's why our herbs are so badass, you know? And yeah. so, and then, you know, we do all the things like test for heavy metals and pesticides and aflatoxins and microbials and and beyond do genetic testing fingerprint um, chromatography and we do that in tga labs so that's all there it's a hot shit like that's as good as it goes Mm -hmm. it's as good at these are like in terms of um the raw the raw product you start Mm. with and we go then there's you know i'm not saying we're the only people doing it um but you know, like it's, there's, there's not many, um, <laughs> I was just one of the only. but you know, then we go for a powdered, powdered extract application, mm. which has worked for me. And I decided on that when I was, um, starting at the markets 
we start with, and we that's why we kind of grow at a nice sustainable rate because we only have a particular amount of herb we can source and you know then we have like we our reishi farmer you know one reishi farmer who's teaching other people like in in the area that he's in around the mm. Derby mountains real high teaching other because he can he's only got a particular um area in which he can yeah. he can grow and handle so he's localizing the industry and teaching others how to do ddow farming how to sustainably um so, and this is the key word sustainably acquire wild wood wild oak so we're growing the mushrooms on wild wood and that there's there's a lot of stories there because there's a lot of um endangered herbs in through china and just knowing that we're ensuring that we're working with operations that in no way shape or form mm. are going to deprive not only the landscape of the actual herb but not even deprive the soil you know just so like the reishi is rotated every two years to make sure that the soil stays just beautiful and fresh and you don't mm. even need the soil you, you but you need to remain you need it to be alive and when there's connection to a tradition of growing and a tradition of a herb you've you know there's a long-term plan and handing that tradition over to future generations and ensuring that it's present it's something we're void of in the west but the the people that we're working with um and i'm partnered with in um in china and the the farmers especially they're connected to understanding that this is something that needs to get passed down huh. and also just practically you lose our business if you step out of that deed yeah. our practice and so more often than not they're teaching us what next level is yeah yeah and and i've seen when, when you're over there and, and you do you know facebook lives or whatever you you can do from china is um you know it's no a vpn <laughs> there you go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so always ways and um yeah i can see how passionate these people are and and they they have a lot of integrity and, and beautiful to hear from you that you know you learn from them and you know so it should be because you know they, they probably have lived this for generations in their family and mm. yeah it's it's great to know that you're actually there because it's it's one thing to tell a story it's another thing to actually have been there and tell the same story oh yeah and, and finally neural nectar i'm gonna leave that with you so leave oh, it in thanks. the workplace because that's the neural nectar is just the the brain magic blend oh, that's a lot that's a big one people are you know people are Needing some brain. pick me up, you yeah. know. Like, people love the adaptogenic nootropics these days, <laughs> but you know, from a tonic herbal perspective, no synthetics in there. Get the blood moving in through the cerebrum, you know. Get the macuna in there, you know. From a Western sense, like lifting up the dopamine. But then, you know, we've just got these herbs like the rhodiola in there, just to like pick the body up from the base, because you need you need kidneys to be in a brain tonic, right? Because the kidneys regulate mm. the the sea of marrow. But that is that's a blend where if you want to work with long term to cultivate a, a flow of blood and chi through your brain um, and a, you know, an electromagnetic capacity which you know does tick over into um, recall wit uh, you know just general memory cognitive you know in, mm. enhancement you know with, and you, especially if you've got a big day of like meetings or podcasts or anything uh -huh. like that you have a little start with a quarter teaspoon get up to half a teaspoon um, it's not it's not like the masons where you take like a, a whole heat teaspoon every day especially in the beginning you'll feel that you know so like you'll 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 really feel the neural nectar get to work but it's a good that's mm, the rhodiola you great. can smell as well oh, um, but yeah the lion's mane in there as well which is just mm. absolute brain magic but um yeah that's one i wanted you guys to be getting onto ginkgo Dang. leaf as well that's the best bloody ginkgo leaf one of the <laughs> oldest trees oldest trees you know in the mm. you know on the on the planet dinosaur tree and that's a dinosaur leaf going in there as well oh great i got it in my body now that's connecting new to old i mean <laughs> old to new Hey, um, I do, do want to point out your integrity here also in terms of your packaging because it's really beautiful. They are Myron glass, glass, right? Yeah. Do you just want to say one or two things about that? Because that, that's, that's not, like, you have to source especially and it's probably, you know, not the cheapest packaging that you can imagine. It's probably no, it's one of cheap. the most expensive packaging, but there's a reason why you, why you go all the way also with your packaging, hey? Yeah, and that's, so that's ultraviolet glass. So that's the same glass that um, the Egyptians were using in tombs to um, preserve their, their honey and their oils. And that's why really? they were still preserved when they were uh, digging them up because Gee. it's an ultra protective glass, only letting in that, um, that ultraviolet spectrum of light. And so it's a preserver. You know, there's you do those tests where you put like a cherry tomato in a normal glass and an amber glass and a mirror glass and you leave them for however long. Yeah. Clear, boom, it's gonna be it's gonna be rancid, mm. amber, it's gonna be quite dehydrated and coming out fresh of the mirror glass. So ultra protective, so it's protecting the herbs. Um also 
with the intent that everyone reuses them. Either you go and get a big bag um, of herbs because we sell, you know, you can get your 100 grams there, but, you know, you can get 250 grams and eventually if you just know that you and the family love mm. it, get a kilo bag. Mm. You stick it in back of a pantry or put mm-hmm. it in the freezer if you're not going to use it for a while and keep on filling up your jar. Or you just take the jar, soak it, delabel it, they're super sexy. They're kind of like they're, they oh, look, they're awesome. They yeah. look jet black, and but then you get them yeah. in the light, and you get like the violet hits, yeah. and you, you put your spices in them. Yeah, know, we do. We we have all our herbs in, in our our cupboard in in there. You know, you label them with what? Because you can't, of course, look through it. Mm. My, yeah, yeah. mushroom mushroom fairy dyes. If you throw out a mirror on glass, just so everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can be really sharp. I don't, I don't think it has happened to me many times <laughs> because I treasure them. I really do. Mm. They are awesome. Well, thank you very much for that gift as well. Mason, before you go, um, amazing, the knowledge you have, eh? Like, it's, um, it's, I, I love how you can put that in, in really bite size, you know, snippets there so that people actually can, you, you break it down in a way that one can follow you. And I love that. And so, uh, beside, of course, uh, your website of your company, which is superfest.com.au, mm-hmm. um, and, and that can be like, your products can be ordered all over the world, right? Yeah, not at the moment because COVID's kind of like screwing that up for everyone. But oh, yeah. we're working on launching in the States at the moment. Yeah. That's kind of coming up. But, but I, yeah, I know people in, even in Europe who, who take your your products regularly. But but what I also wanted to ask you is um, where can people learn more of you? Because um, I, I think you have a great way of, of just, you know, translating this into layman's terms and, and you know language that one can follow and understand like what's a good way to to follow you mm, there's a few it's like you know pick your pipe um we're basically an educational like you guys are an education mm. company as well so the super feast podcast i'll we'll have like one week on one week off with my fiance tani who people may have heard on the sauna podcast <laughs> and she's um a wealth of knowledge we don't just talk about herbs we talk about the whole lifestyle on the yeah. super feast podcast if you're on instagram We've got a lot of educational posts there, especially if you go to the IGTV section, there's a plethora of knowledge there. Mm. Jumping on the newsletter over at superfeast.com.au, yep. we, um, we have unique emails going out where Tani and I will um, share a little bit from the soul and uh, yeah, YouTube as well cool. is there. Otherwise, you go hit up the blog as well on the website. It's all there. Nice. Yeah, that sounds like a well-rounded company. Education is making one core core mission of yours, eh? Well, actually, we have um free course as well called like, Tonic Herbalism 101. Oh, stop it. Yeah, so yeah. everyone can go, you know, you'll find it on the website. But yeah, free. <laughs> I think it's great. an eight-video eight, eight video series where I break down yeah. everything that I've just shared, but into potentially even further bite-sized bits. Mm. Mason, thank you so much. That was absolutely awesome. I learned so much and I'm sure the people that listen to it as well. Thanks, bro. Go well. I hope we have uh, have you on our podcast many times over in the future. And, and for now, thank you. Go well. See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>